Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning to uh, uh, all of you. I have a couple of questions specifically for uh, Chairman Hansen, but let me sort of set the stage. Uh, as uh, I know you're familiar, California has one nuclear facility still in operation, but three uh, that are in various stages of decommissioning. Uh, and those would be San Onofre, Rancho Seco, and Humboldt Bay. Uh, with the most recent action being the NRC's announcement that it has terminated the license for Humboldt Bay's Unit 3 and released the unit for uh, the, the unit site for unrestricted use on November 18th. A transparent decommissioning process, I think we can all agree, uh, and a clear understanding of its timeline is critical to not just operators and stakeholders, but to community members uh, at large and local governments around these sites. Uh, concerns about environmental health impacts, future use, uh, of these sites, et cetera. So uh, with that as a lead-in, the qu first question is this, Mr. Chairman, given that the NRC's historic role has been in regulating the operations of nuclear power plants rather than overseeing their decommissioning, how do you see the NRC meeting this expanded role of oversight regarding decommissioning activities and what's being done internally to ensure that the NRC is ready to conduct a transparent and timely process. Yeah, thank you, um, Senator, for that. We really have had the opportunity because um, while we've, as you said, we've, we've had an increasing number of decommissionings or plants entering decommissioning over the last several years because they didn't, all 26 didn't hit all at once. We've been able to shift staff gradually um, to focus on, on decommissioning. I call it kind of the, the three challenges that the, that the agency currently has. You know, Historically, we focused mostly on the safe operation of the current fleet. And we had kind of, um, with regard to reactors, we had kind of that single mission. Well, now we're doing three things. We're getting ready for new technology. Of course, we're focused on the existing fleet, like Diablo Canyon, while it's still operating. And we're shifting our focus as well. We're pivoting, if you will, uh, to uh, decommissioning. And I, I think the overall, the agency's been quite successful in that regard in being able to review those, those shifts by our licensees to that new status. So thank you. And just uh, two comments before my next question. One, uh, looking at not just shifting personnel to getting ready for new technology, as you said, current operations and decommissioning, sort of a new growing priority. But if there's uh, capacity concerns, need for additional staffing and other resources to accommodate this shift, uh, please let this uh, committee know how we can be supportive uh, of that. Um, and uh, second, just uh, in thinking ahead on the decommissioning from, my start was in local government before moving to state government, before coming to uh, the U.S. Senate. So I know uh, uh, my colleagues in local government are anxious in many ways to, even if it's thinking 10, 20, 30 years ahead, what future use of these sites can and should be. Uh, Residential, maybe you know, not quite the case, but for example, uh, uh, clean energy technologies, re renewable energy sources, et cetera, to take advantage of existing tie-ins to transmission and distribution infrastructure, which is key for wind when appropriate, solar uh, if and when appropriate, depending on that natural resource uh, that's uh, site-specific. Uh, so I wanted to plant that seed. Uh, the second question is this specifically on the issue of community interest and engagement. The NRC states that it, quote, considers public involvement in and information about the NRC's activities to be a cornerstone of strong, fair regulation of the nuclear industry, end quote. So the question is, how do you see the NRC's role in facilitating local community stakeholders with the decommissioning process specifically from beginning, but not just at the beginning, through until the end? Um, thank you. Senator, uh, as part of the implementation of the Nuclear Energy uh, Innovation and Modernization Act, we completed a, a, a study, if you will, or a report on best practices for community advisory boards. Um, and, and we delivered, we'd be happy to provide your, your office um, uh, with that. And as, as part of the, um, the proposed decommissioning rule, um, my understanding is that we'll be putting those best practices for community engagement uh, into guidance 
uh, for our licensees. We also participate regularly in community advisory board meetings so that people have an understanding of what it is uh, the agency's doing, uh, how we're overseeing our licensees. I know um, uh, the uh, performance of spent fuel storage system uh, at San Onofre is of significant concern to the community. And, uh, and we participated uh, a great deal in the community advisory board there to talk about how our oversight, how we're overseeing the licensee and the licensee's monitoring program, how we're ground truthing the data that we're getting from the licensee about the performance of those systems. So that's just kind of one example. I don't know if my call, if, uh, Commissioner Barron, if you want to sure. jump in. The only in. thing I'd add there is one of the things we've been interested in doing is making sure we provide flexibility for how all that's structured. So at some sites in the country, it's the, the company has set up uh, an advisory panel and involved the local community. In other places, it's the state. The state legislature passed legislation and established it. I think that's what they did in Massachusetts and Vermont. So one of the things I think we've been careful to do is allow that flexibility. Different communities, different states are going to want to do it different ways, and we don't want to uh, push them to do it any one particular way. So, well, and just in closing, uh, I would imagine it is done collaboratively with, in California, the legislature or the Public Utilities Commission uh, and its uh, counterparts in other states, other regulatory and oversight bodies to uh, not just arrive at this stakeholder process, but uh, formalize uh, any commitments that are made as a result. Thank you, Madam Chair.